I started as a competitive strongman and powerlifter. And uh, again, I had never had any desire to be an actual fighter. I, I didn't like fighting. But uh, I started competing in powerlifting in 1990, uh, did a couple of uh, strongman contests in 94 and 95, competed in, in strength sports right through till 96, uh, started professional wrestling. I went to the Hart Brothers Pro Wrestling Camp in Calgary and started wrestling in 91. Oh, yeah? And uh, so I did those two things uh, through to 96. I, I carried on wrestling until about 2001. Uh, the fighting thing... It, it happened kind of in an unusual fashion. In 1996, I was wrestling in a place called Insane Championship Wrestling uh, in one of the rougher parts of Detroit. And I saw a lady named Phyllis Lee at the show. And I had recognized her from watching UFC videotape. She used to be Dan Severn's manager, and she managed a couple other fighters. So I went over to make the connection, just say hi, and, and I got her card. And she told me she wasn't booking pro wrestlers, but... The Shamrock Brothers had just left the Pancrase MMA organization in Japan. So Pancrase called Phyllis because they knew her from her association with Carl Gotch, who taught a lot of the Japanese fighters. And they got Phyllis to be their new North American booker. So she was looking for North American talent at the time. And I knew about Pancrase. I was a big Pancrase fan. I was watching bootleg, uh, you know, this is our fa how far back we're going. I was watching bootleg VHS tapes of them all the time. Yeah. Uh, they weren't well known at all in North America, but I was a big fan. So I started rattling off all the names of the, the Pancras fighters, and she said, oh, well, you know, take this application form, fill it out, and we're looking for fighters. Now, I had always wanted to go to Japan as a pro wrestler, and, and it had never worked out. So half-assed joking, I, I filled that application form up with lies, all these, these spurious martial arts credentials that I actually <laughs> didn't have. And I sent it in with my tongue in my cheek, thinking, you know, they're, they've never taken a Canadian before. They're not going to make the first one me because they're going to look into my credentials, realize I'm lying and that'll be it. And a month later, I got a call saying, uh, pack your bags. You're going to Japan. Oh boy. So, uh, yeah, I, without any experience, not even in high school wrestling or local martial arts tournaments, I'd never had anything other than street fights. Uh, my first fight ever was against the number three ranked fighter in the world in front of 10,000 people in Tokyo. Oh my God. So, I mean, you must've been in the locker room, like shitting your pants, right? That is an understatement, man. It, it was, <laughs> dude, it was, and the thing was, I wasn't even really sure it was going to be a real fight until I was in the ring because there were a lot of rumors going around about Pancrase right. at the time. They, they considered themselves to be a professional wrestling organization that just happened to have real fights. So Pancrase yeah, it seems off like the rules were kind of based on pro wrestling, right? Because you got like, there's no closed fist. There's like rope breaks and stuff like this. Yeah, you could punch to the body, but it was open hands to the head. You had a limited amount of rope breaks to get out of holds. It was even in a pro wrestling ring. It was yeah. a sprung pro wrestling ring with three ropes. So uh, there, there is, you know, for viewers that aren't aware of this, there's a style that was prevalent in Japan at the time called worked shoot. A shoot is a real fight. A work is a, a fake fight. And then worked shoot is a fight that is predetermined but is made to look real. So you don't see a lot of the flashy pro wrestling stuff like bouncing off the ropes and coming off the top rope. And they, they beat the hell out of each other, but they know where they're going and they know who's going to win. Yeah. So so there was a lot of suspicion about uh, Pancrase having worked shoot bouts. They had the occasional work shoot bout, but it was about 95% straight up, you know, we're fighting. But I didn't know. I mean, nobody was telling me anything. The whole week that I was there before the fight, I was half waiting for somebody to come up and tell me, okay, this is what's going to go down. And nobody ever did. Mm. Uh, now, now I, I was so green to the fight community. I didn't, I didn't have a corner man. I didn't have a mouth guard. I didn't have a groin cup. I didn't have anything. <laughs> so I'm walking to the ring thinking, did they forget to give me the finish? Like, I, I don't want to be fighting with this guy if he's thinking that we're, we're working something. And then I got in the ring and I looked down and – the thing with Pancrase was they wouldn't change out their canvas very often. They would just sterilize it after every show. Mm -hmm. So there were blood splatters from 100 different fights all over the canvas. And that's the point where I was finally certain that this is going to be a real fight. Oh, wow. And and you were even in there. I mean, so I was going to say that you're in there with like Masakatsu Funaki and things like or um, Minato Suzuki, right? Yeah, yeah. My first fight was against um, uh, Ryushi Yanagizawa, who was my favorite fighter in the in the organization, and um, we call him Aji. 
And uh, I, I, he beat me, but I guess I did well enough that within a week of my getting back to Canada, I got a phone call, and it was Phyllis. She was losing her mind. She said, look, they want you to come back and, and live at their dojo for a few weeks and train with them. Uh, and so, of course, I jumped at the opportunity. I had nothing going on in Canada. And her next sentence was, oh, yeah, and uh, they already have your next opponent lined up. He specifically requested to fight you. It's Masakasu Funaki. And oh, you know, this God. is... Yeah, at the time, the reigning world champion, a guy who's had legendary fights, a guy who's got wins over Boss Rutten, yeah. over Ken Shamrock, over Frank Shamrock. He's one of the most lethal fighters in the history of the game. And arguably between about 93 and 97, which is the year that I fought him, you, know, you, you could make a case for most of that time him being the best fighter in the world. Right. So, yeah, I, was, I, just, I went from the frying pan into the fire. Hmm. Okay, so you're in the ring. You see the blood. Uh, it, you know, you're looking at the guy across the ring, it, it hits you at this point that, you know, it's about to hit the fan right now. Uh, yeah. so what is your first move? I mean, what are you thinking? Like when the bell rings, uh, is it just like spaz out and just go crazy or is it like stay calm, compose yourself, let's get through this. Or, you know, what was your game plan like on the fly right in those first well, seconds? I knew that my only advantage was strength. You know, I, I was coming off a career as a strength athlete and a strong man, so I knew that I would be, even though Aji's a big dude, he was like 225 pounds, I knew I'd be stronger than him. He would have every other advantage over me, but I was stronger than him. So, yeah, that, that's always the way I've done things in a fight, is just to, to pressure and, and throw myself at people. And especially in this case, Aji's a very good stand-up fighter. The last thing I wanted to do was stand back and let him pick me apart. Yeah. So uh, I just I went straight at him, and I think it helped that Guy Mesger, who who I really owe a, a big debt of gratitude to, because I think he sensed very early on in, in the week that we were there before the fights that I was out of my depth, and he kind of took me under his wing and and gave me the lay of the land and, and gave me a little scouting report on Aji, and he told me Aji doesn't like to be pressured. He likes a slow pace. So that cinched it for me. That was I was planning on fighting that way anyway. But, uh, yeah, that, that definitely clinched it. So I just threw myself at him and uh, made a fight out of it. I mean, we went good 13 minutes. Um, back in those days, there were no rounds. It was just one round of uh, either 10, 20, or 30 minutes. Uh, oh, sorry, this was a 15-minute one. Um, but, yeah, it, it lasted 13 minutes. And, uh, and when it was over, I got a big ovation from a big section of the crowd, even though I had, I had lost by a mile just because – a lot of Western fighters would go over there and be overwhelmed and they'd get beaten really quickly because they were scared. And I was at least willing to, to hang it all out there. And, and that's what every fighter loves about Japan is they respect you for how hard you fight even more than whether you win or lose. 